Hey there. So I talk a lot about big clusters and that's exciting, but most people do their data analysis on just a single server. So in today's video, we're gonna go through, we're gonna go to AWS, we're gonna get a big server from them. We're gonna install some Python open source fun stuff on there like Pandas and Dask. We're gonna do a little bit of analysis. Uh, before I switch over to AWS and the console and step you through this, I got a whiteboard now, I'm getting into this, and I wanna show you an awful diagram to explain what you're gonna see. So first up, this is you, this is me, big smile, and we're gonna go rent a server from AWS, which is one of the cloud providers. Oh, how cool. If that sounds fancier than it is, just remember this cloud, and hopefully you can kind of see this is supposed to be a cloud, right? It's really just like a rental car. So we're just gonna rent a server instead of buying one. That's it. Now they've got a bunch of different services out there, so we, we can get more than just servers. They call their VMs EC2 instances. Why, who cares? But at the end of the day, that's the one we're gonna get. That's what we're gonna do today. We'll have a, a development environment, something that's bigger and beefier than what we're using on our local machine. Um, let's, let's jump right into it. Let's head to the rental car counter and get our car. So we want a VM that's called EC2 in AWS, and I'm going to launch an instance, and it's gonna ask me first, choose your operating system. This is kinda of like choosing your make. So I want a CentOS 7 operating system, which is a popular choice. I'll click select here to choose that. Now it's gonna say, hey, what size car do you want? You know, intermediate or what class of car, subcompact, you know, it's impossible to tell with rental cars. This is actually pretty easy to see the different sizes, cores, memory, if you want GPUs, things like that. There's a ton of options. I'll choose a modest economical instance, but similar to what my laptop is. I'll leave the defaults here. I'm gonna add a little bit of storage. Think of this as like maybe adding, I don't know, extra trunk space. And then I'll give this a quick tag so I can identify it. I'll call it Gus VM. And then I'm going to leave this security group as the default. So we're gonna SSH into this VM in a second, which is just a way of accessing our rental car. And now I'll review all of this very quickly and click launch. And I will choose something called a key pair, which apologies, I won't explain right now, but this is basically the key that's gonna let us open up the car and use it. We have to have, a, a, we have, to have basically our own copy of this key locally. So I'll click launch instances here. This will take a minute or two to spin up and then we'll come back, we'll go into the VM and we'll install some stuff. AWS is telling me, hey, it's running, great, let's go pick it up. So I can copy the public IP address and we're gonna SSH into this machine, which is the same as just putting our key into the door and open the thing up. So I open up my terminal and over here on the right, we're gonna SSH in, SSH command, our key, and then the IP address of the VM. And now we have access to this. So now that we're inside the VM, okay, this is gonna be our development environment. We wanna install some stuff. We want Python, we want Dask and Pandas, all these fun packages. So we're gonna use Miniconda, which is an easy way of getting the environment we want. So I'm gonna copy this link. And actually, I think I first need to install something that's kind of like my browser so that I can actually download stuff. So I'm gonna download a tool called wget. And this is just gonna let me essentially right click and download something. Oh, this is killing my time for the video. Okay, excellent, that's done. So now I'll type wget, I'll pass in this link. And now Miniconda has been downloaded. I'm gonna install this. And this will take a second to install, but this is going to give us Python and the ability to install packages. So I'll pause here while this runs and we'll come back. Okay, Miniconda is installed. Now let's start installing packages. Or first, actually first we need to activate it. So I'm gonna activate Miniconda. This now is going to let us pip install stuff. And what do we want to install or conda install things? Well, we want to install Python. Uh, in fact, actually we have now a version of Python. We can see what it is. It's 391, excellent. So let's just go ahead and install pip install pandas. Uh, we'll install dask as well IPy and ipython. Okay, we're almost done. So we've now installed uh, Pandas and Dask and IPython. Let's go ahead and clear our shell here just to make things a little cleaner. We'll start an IPython session. And now we're going to import Dask. We'll import, if I can spell it right, import dask.dataframe. And I'm just copying some commands over here from the, Dask, uh, from the Dask docs. And then let's quickly create a data frame. We can do this. Let's say df, this is creating a random data set. And now we have, we have Dask, we have a development environment with our, with our rental car in the cloud. So congratulations. From here, we can do lots of different things. You could spin up a cluster with Coiled separately if you wanted to, but this is just an easy way to get started with your own development environment. 